Hello, thanks for joining me today. We're going to talk about proactive bot defense on F5's advanced web application firewall. Protecting against bots is really important because they're used for a variety of different attack types like distributed denial of service, credential stuffing, and web scraping, just to name a few examples. This solution is a little bit different than some of the other protections because it actually protects against the attack tool rather than the attack vector. So let's jump in and take a look. So we have a DVWA web application deployed behind the big IP right now. This is just a virtual server and we have no security policies in place. So let's take a look at it. We're going to use curl as our example bot in this case. So we hit the DVWA logon page. We can see the logon form right here. You can see that it's DVWA. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create a log profile and a DOS protection profile to provide that bot protection that we've already talked about. So to do that, we're going to go here to event logs, logging profiles. We're going to click the plus sign. We'll name this bot logging. We'll enable bot defense. We'll turn on the local publisher. We'll go ahead and check all the boxes to log everything right now. You'll note that we could publish it remotely. So we have that. Next, we'll create the DOS protection profile. We'll go to application security. We'll enable that. We don't need any TPS-based detection right now, so we're going to turn that off. We're going to skip proactive bot defense for the moment and come back later. We're going to build up to it. We're going to go to bot signatures and we're going to enable that. And here on the categories, because curl command falls into the HTTP library under benign categories, we're actually going to go ahead and block that for our example for the moment. All right, so we have this ready to go. Let's go ahead and get these added onto our virtual server. We're going to go to DOS Protection Profile, Enabled, and select Bot Defense. Log Profile, we're going to Enable, and we're going to move over Bot Logging. Now we're ready to test. Let's see if that stops our bot. Alright, so now we can't get in. But let's try something else. We're going to just change the user agent that's being sent. So instead of sending that it's curl, we'll send that it's my user agent. Ah, now we got in again. Okay, so why did that happen? The signature was based on looking at it and saying, this is what curl sends to us and this is what we expect. So when we get that user agent, we know that it's curl. As soon as I change the user agent, the signature didn't work. So we have a solution for that. You can go ahead and create an additional signature. Okay, so we'll name this my user agent, and we can do this as an HTTP library category. And for the rule, we could do simple or advanced. We'll do simple. So if the user agent contains my user agent, then we'll go ahead and block it. So we're already set to block HTTP library, so let's see if that works now. We'll send the exact same thing, sending my user agent and we can see it's again blocked. Unfortunately, that's not going to work out very well in the long term though, because all the attacker is going to do is start cycling their user agent strings. And now they have access again. So we have to have a better solution for this. Fortunately we do. It's called proactive bot defense, and that's the purpose of this video. So let's take a look. So what we can do now is go back to our DOS profile We'll go to Bot Defense, Application Security, and this time we're going to go ahead and turn on Proactive Bot Defense. 
So we can select during attacks or always. During attacks means only if a DOS attack is detected. Then we'll start doing this to prevent it from getting worse. In this case, we'll go ahead and select always. So here we can block requests from suspicious browsers. We're going to come back and talk about this a little bit more for suspicious browsers and CAPTCHAs. For the grace period, this is how long until it starts taking effect. So if we apply this and there are already users browsing the website, how long until they're able to be detected as non-bots before they can access? We're going to set zero because we don't have anyone on this website right now. Cross-domain requests. If you're using cross-origin, uh, then you need to go ahead and uh, set those domains here so we could say which domains should be allowed and so on. In this case, we don't have any of that. And we can, of course, whitelist URLs. So we'll hit update. This is now active. Let's take a look at this. So now we can see we get a very different response back. So what we got is JavaScript coming back. You can see it's obfuscated here. And it says that you need to enable JavaScript to view the page content. Your support ID is blah, blah, blah. So you could plug this into ASM and it would tell you uh, what happened here. But we can also go ahead and take a look at the logs. So if we go look at the event logs, let's take a look at event logs, bot defense requests. So here we can see that there have been a few events. Uh, we had some legal and illegal points here. We had TCP resets earlier when we were blocking. And now that we've enabled proactive bot defense, we're actually getting these browser challenges. So the way that proactive bot defense works is when a client initially tries to make a request, we'll go ahead and send them back a JavaScript challenge. And they need to complete that. When they do, then we'll give them a cookie. And every subsequent request when they present that cookie, then we'll know that they're not a bot. So the next logical question might be, OK, if it needs to pass the JavaScript for us to determine that it's not a bot, what if the bot can pass the JavaScript challenge? So remember we talked back here about the suspicious browser detection. So right here, we're set to block suspicious browsers, and we have a CAPTCHA challenge. So let's take a, a look at that. So if we say, let's go to the web page. We immediately get access to the DVWA logon page. But let's do the same thing, but this time, Let's change our user agent string to something else. So we'll just change it to Internet Explorer 10. This time, we get a CAPTCHA. And we have to pass the CAPTCHA before we can get in. Now we get access to the page. And we have our cookie, so we won't get the CAPTCHA again. So this is important. Because what's happening is we're evaluating the browser, determining what browser we think it is. And then if it tells us it's something else, then we know that that's a problem. It's a, it's a suspicious browser. So if, it, if we have extremely high suspicion, we're positive it's a bot, then we're just going to go ahead and, and block it. If it's maybe questionable, just suspicious level, then we're going to go ahead and give them a CAPTCHA in order to validate. And if it's behaving normally the way we would expect it to, then we'll just allow them through and they won't see anything. So the vast majority of users are not going to see CAPTCHAs in this scenario. So let's take a quick look at the logs on the cookies. So here we've made our request. We've got the JavaScript challenge. We make the request. We get the CAPTCHA challenge here. And finally, we're making the request with our required cookies. If we take a look at the logs, here's what the logs look like. You can see initially we do a browser challenge. That's the JavaScript. It's identified as a suspicious browser, so we do a CAPTCHA. We pass the CAPTCHA, and now subsequent requests are allowed because we have the cookie. So that's really the entire solution in play. So what we've done now is scaled up with the bots. We've moved from basic bot protection with signatures to adding new signatures to moving to JavaScript challenges and even CAPTCHA challenges for identified suspicious browsers so we can advance with the bots in complexity.
The last piece of the puzzle is, what if you have a mobile app that can't handle the JavaScript challenges, but it still needs to get access? We have an anti-bot mobile SDK that you can integrate into the application for that, and we'll cover that in another video. So that concludes the video today on proactive bot detection. Thanks for watching.